will now call to order the meeting of the Omaha Planning Board. The Planning Board members that are here today are Sidney Franklin, Jeff Moore, Patrick Morris, Michael Pate, Jorge Sotolongo, Dave Rosacker, Vice Chair, and I'm Greg Rosenbaum, Chairman. Members of the City staff that are in attendance today are Dave Fanslaw, Planning Director, Eric England, Assistant Planning Director, Mike Carter, Current Planning Manager, Jennifer Taylor of the City Law Department, and Kathy Epperson is our Recording Secretary. Our rules of procedure are as follows. Notice of this hearing has been published. Copies of today's agenda are located on the table in front of us. You are welcome to come down and pick one up. The cases on the consent agenda will be heard first. Consent, consent cases have been recommended for layover, have already been heard, or are perceived by the Planning Board to be non-controversial. Therefore, they will be read and voted on without the opportunity for you to state your opinion on the case. If you wish to have this case discussed during this hearing, you may remove the case from the consent agenda. To do so, when each case is read, I will ask if anyone wants the case removed for discussion. If you do, please stand up and say so, and the case will be removed. This case will then be heard after we vote on the cases that remain on, con on consent. When the case is heard, you'll have the opportunity to come to the podium, clearly state your name and address, and give your testimony at that time. <clears throat> when hearing cases on the regular agenda, the board will first hear from the applicant. After the applicant states their case, we will hear from the proponents and then we will hear from the opponents. After both sides are heard, the public hearing will be closed and no additional testimony will be permitted unless a board member requests additional information. When at the podium, please clearly state your name, address, and whom you are representing for the record. Your testimony is very important to us. In the interest of time and courtesy to others, please be short and to the point. We will try to limit each case to 10 minutes. Those directly involved in the case, please speak first. We request that large groups select a spokesperson to represent that group, therefore eliminating repetitive testimony. When giving testimony, please provi provide new information and try not to repeat what has been previously said. We do ask that all speakers and others be treated with courtesy and with respect in that regard Please remain silent while see, seated, and please turn off your cell phones. Our decision to de, our decision to approve, <laughs> deny, or continue a case made here today will be forwarded to the City Council for another public hearing and final disposition by the City Council. Conditional use permits are an exception to this rule. The Board's decision made here today on conditional use permits are final and not forwarded to the City Council. Lastly, upon the advice of the Law Department, all communications to the board members from attorneys or other interested parties should be transmitted through the Planning Department so that they are made a part of the public record. The Department will then transmit all that information to the board as well as to the rest of the public. A current copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act can be found in a white binder in this room. With that said, I'm going to get started on the consent cases, again, if you want one of those cases removed, you need to stand up and let me know and I will remove that from the agenda and then it will be heard after we go through all the consent cases. <clears throat> agenda item number four, case C3-24-132, C10-24-97, C12-24-98, applicant. Bennington Public Schools, it is on consent for approval, request preliminary plat approval of Military 180 Crossing, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to R4, along with approval of a waiver to the PDZ present development zone. This was laid over from our May meeting, location northeast of 180th Street and Military Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number five, case C7-24-96. Applicant, Bennington Public Schools. It is on consent for approval. Request approval of a conditional use permit to allow secondary educational facilities in the R4 district with a waiver to section 55186 height to 
to allow a 50-foot tall building laid over from our May meeting location northeast of 180th Street and Military Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number seven, case C3-24-175, applicant, planning department on behalf of the city of Omaha. It is on for approval. Request approval of the disposition of city-owned property, location 4702 South 25th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 10, case C12-24-164. Applicant Hawkins Construction Company it is on for approval. Request preliminary and final plat approval of Harvey Industrial Replat 3, a minor plat inside city limits. Location 4420 South 67th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 11, case C10-24-9, C12-24-10. Applicant 183 Maple LLC on for approval. Request revised preliminary plat approval of West Maple Hills, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to DR and MU. Location northeast of Big Elk Parkway and West Maple Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 14, KC 10-24-102. C12-24-103, Applicant Metropolitan Community College. It is on for approval. Request preliminary and final plat approval of MCC El Elkhorn Campus, a minor plat inside city limits with rezoning from AG R5 and R6 to R5, along with approval of the ACI Area of Civic Importance Overlay District. Location, Northeast of 204th Street and West Dodge Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 16, case C10-24-159, applicant Jose Martinez. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from R535 to R7. Property is located within an NCE overlay district. Location 3006 and 3010 South 9th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none, agenda item number 17, case C10-4-306, applicant Maple 165 LLC. It is on for approval. Request approval of a major amendment to the mixed use district development agreement for Maple Valley. Location, 16510 Bedford Ave. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 23, case C8-24-160. Applicant Haley Longo, it is on for approval. Request approval of a special use permit to allow daycare general in the R4 district. Location 7153 North 165th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 25, case C7-24-115. Applicant, Metropolitan Community College, on for approval. Request approval of a conditional use permit to allow college and university facilities in the R5 district. Location, northeast of 204th Street and West Dodge Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 26, case C10-24-174, C7-24-165, applicant. 3732 Holdings 2 LLC on for approval. Request approval of a major amendment to the presumed conditional use permit pursuant to section 55883Q to allow single family detached in the LC district with rezoning from R2 and LC to LC along with approval of the MCC major commercial corridor overlay district. Location 8810 and 8820 Blondo Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 27 case, C4-24-161. <coughs> Applicant Planning Board is on for consent for approval. Request approval of the vacation of an irregular portion of the right-of-way located at the intersection of 8th 
8th Street and Riverfront Drive. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number nine, case C3-24-146, applicant planning department on behalf of the city of Omaha. It is on for layover. Request approval of the Central Park Plaza, the duo TIF redevelopment project plan. Location 222 South 15th and 201 South 16th streets. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda, uh, agenda item number 18, KC 10 4 306, applicant K9 Resorts. It is on for layover. Request approval of a major amendment to the mixed use district development agreement for Maple Valley. Location 16510 Bedford Ave. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 21, case C11 21 249. Applicant Lyric Townhomes, it is on for layover. Request approval of a major amendment to the PUR Plan Unit Redevelopment Overlay District. Location 1110 South 20th Avenue Plaza. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Those are the consent cases. I'm gonna take a motion on the consent cases that are on for approval. Approve agenda items number four, five, seven, 10, 11, 14, 16, 17, 23, 25, 26, and 27. Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved seven to zero. Do we have a motion for the consent cases that were on for layover? Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved? Okay, those were the consent cases. Everything was left on consent. If you were here for one of those cases, no further action will be taken today. We thank you for coming down. You're welcome to stay or you are free to leave. It's up to you. But we thank you for all coming down. The first two cases uh, are on uh, the administrative meeting only, means that there will not be opportunity for public testimony. Agenda item number one, case C10-21-101, C12-21-102. Applicant, Celebrity Homes, Omaha, request final plat approval of Majestic 178, lots 99 through 196, Outlots D through H, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to R4. Location, south of 175th Street and Blue Heron Parkway. Eric. Yeah, so this final plat is the second phase of Majestic 178. It's for 98 single family residential lots, five out lots in uh, less than uh, about, t about 29 and a half acres. The preliminary plat was approved back in 2021 with the first phase final plat approved in August of 2000, 2022. Um, staff recommends approval of the rezoning from AG to R4, approval of the final plat of Majestic 178, subject to submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement prior to City Council. Any comments, questions? Do we have a motion? I move approval of the rezoning from AG to R4 and approval of the final plat of Majestic 178, subject to submittal of an acceptable subdivision agreement prior to forwarding the request on to City Council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 to 0. Agenda item number 2, case C12 24 6, applicant Timothy Banghart. Request final plat approval of Banghart Edition, a minor plat outside city limits, laid over from our January meeting of this year, location 9205 North 156th Street. Eric. Yeah, so this had come to planning board back in um, January of this year. Uh, the final plat was laid over to allow additional time for the applicant to submit pre-approval from the state of Nebraska regarding the proposed on-site septic system. That information has been received. They've also gone to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the necessary 
lot size waiver. The subdivision agreement will account for future sewer and access stipulations regarding um, potential development of surrounding properties. Um, so that will be accounted for. Staff recommends approval of the final plat subject to submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement prior to forwarding to city council. Any comments, questions? Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the final plan. Subject to the submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement prior to submittal to the city council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosecker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved seven to zero. We're going to take agenda items number three and six together. Agenda item number three, KC 12-22-61, applicant John Alexander, request preliminary and final plat approval of Sycamore Farms, a minor plat outside city limits with the waiver to section 5399 sidewalks. Property is located within the floodway overlay district. This was laid over from our um, meeting, uh, October 5th meeting, I'm sorry, uh, 2022. Location, northeast of River Road Drive and West Dodge Road. And agenda item number six, case C7-22-72, applicant John Alexander, request approval of a conditional use permit to allow a campground in the AG, AG district. Property is, excuse me, located within the floodway overlay district, also load laid over from our October 2022 meeting. Location, northeast, of River Road Drive and West Dodge Road is the applicant here. Okay. Please come forward, give your name and address, please. I'm John Alexander, 1150 River Road Drive, Waterloo, Nebraska, 68069. Glad to be here and happy to answer any questions or provide any information. Okay. Thanks, John. You bet. Thank you, John. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Orhan Saran, uh, 7805 Leavenworth Street, Omaha, Nebraska, representing Gene Saran, my father. We have the adjacent piece of property to Mr. Alexander's and we look forward to him doing his development. Our question is merely how soon we can get access to our land that we haven't had access to for the last 30 years because we've been landlocked. Part of his condition is to allow us an easement to reach our piece of property that is now encompassed by Mr. Alexander's. So I'm not against it, merely a question how soon we can activate the easement and maybe that's more for Mr. Alexander to yeah. answer. He'll address that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other proponents? Okay, seeing none of there are any opponents. Seeing none, I'll close public hearing. John, did you wanna, you wanna come forward and address the uh, landlock in the easement? Uh, yeah, so it's kind of been a, a weird piece of property that's in there and um, it's a very small piece of property and uh, part of the development negotiations with the city was to provide an easement to Mr. Gungor. And we are willing to do that. Um, John, just I guess second. I would just maybe we, like, can, go, can, sorry. Can we turn the volume up <clears throat> or can you, can you bring, the mic over? bring the mics up closer to you? You betcha. There you go. Is that better? I'm more than happy to allow the access to Mr. Gungor. I understand it's his property and he wants to use it. Uh, any uh, information that he would provide about what use he intends to do, which I would appreciate that, but if not, understandable. But as part of the process, we are granting an easement to that property and um, hope to work with him and his family going forward. Okay. All right, thank you. That answer your question. So well, my understanding I close the public hearing, but I'll call you up. Oh, I appreciate it. So Let's my understanding. your name and address again. My name is Orhan Saran, 7805 Leavenworth Street, Omaha, Nebraska. We look forward to having uh, Mr. Alexander as a neighbor. So my understanding is that the easement can be put into effect essentially once the, the board votes, correct? Um, Eric will answer that. Well, there, uh, there's a condition that the access easement be provided with the plat, but that would take several months for it to proceed to city council and for that the plat to be recorded. I could say that 
an easement could be provided just separately outside of the planning process you know if the applicant was willing to do that that wouldn't involve um, any city departments or anything like that that would just be well we waited 30 years uh, it'd be nice to be able to get to the piece of property so we can certainly discuss it okay Thank you, John. You've made the commitment to discuss this. Yes, absolutely. Right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yep. Any additional comments, questions from the board? I do have a question, John, if you could come up briefly. Um, just regarding the operations, I know staff has had conversations sure. with you or your representative. Could you just touch a little bit on, uh, obviously, this is in the floodway, and we sure. have a lot of um, criteria and conditions laid out in the recommendation reports just uh, because of that that area that's prone to flooding, which sure. you know we don't need to tell you about, of yes. course, with uh, what you experienced five years ago and and the uh, you know the major flooding of the Elkhorn. Could you just touch briefly? It, it sounds like you're maybe accounting for um, you know both long term and short term camping at the facility. I mean, of course, you talk about the lease, and um, you know a lot of that would would lead to the long term you know, use of the facility during the, you know, the summer hours, spring, Seasonal. summer, and fall. But um, just do you have a summary of, of how you envision, you know, providing the trucking in service of, of emptying, you know, the pumping out from the specific RVs as, as sure. far as waste and things like that? So we envision, uh, obviously, with the floodway, there's no septic uh, system allowed. So I know Mike is a camper, and as Mike Carter with the city has kind of questioned us on how we envision that pumping service going. And we see like a weekly or a every two weeks type service for the long-term people. And we think it'll be a service that people would appreciate because I know, Mike, any, the worst part about camping is, you know, the sewage part of it with your gray and black water. So we want to provide that as a service where they actually, you know, don't actually have to think about that or deal with it. And as far as, uh, you know, flooding and whatnot, we um, <clears throat> obviously have an emergency evacuation plan in place and we'll have the, the weather tuned radio and whatnot and follow the flooding of the river very closely so we can evacuate if needed. Um, we, the last thing we want to do is, you know, have a, an emergency situation arise where we're having evacuation. So we will be proactive with monitoring the river and, and making appropriate actions at that time. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Uh, thank you. John, how does that work with the water? You don't have a spigot at each site not so at each someone's there for the entire summer or months do they have to take their trailer out or how does that they bring it back in with a uh, i mean they can bring a tank of water in how does that work sure i've seen people do that applications where they'll have the cubes of water at their site and then you can come and fill that you know once a week or every two weeks for their water we do have water on site so we would you know uh, have regional, I guess, spigots there, and potentially we could expand that water uh, the to water's provide. On your own well. We have our own well, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I guess to touch on that, obviously it's your well. I don't know what the capacity is, but you must not have immediate concerns as far as. It's a big well. Okay. This was a previous gigantic horse farm, so they had an uh, irrigation wells in place. So it, it's pretty capable. I don't know that it's capable of providing water at every single site but we were envisioning more of a regional where you have maybe 10 sites serviced by a spigot and you know see how that goes as we expand okay obviously you would have to have some kind of service and tracking of you know sure. how you're charging you know individually i we've I don't got know a couple details are worked out yet or we've got a couple campsite management uh software platforms that we've looked at um, but just to start, we're going to just, you know, kind of manage it, manage it as a, any other, you know, business as we go and expand as we, you know, main thing was just to get approval here to see how far we, you know, to keep moving ahead, I guess. So now that we, um, hopefully get approval, we can start to iron out some of those details as far as software packages and whatnot. Okay. Um, just keep city staff attuned if there are, you know, changes, if we need to do, you know, some type of amendment, even if it's a minor amendment to update the operations plans. Okay. Just keep us updated, you know, if there's anything more specific as far as the operations that change. Absolutely. Over time. Thank you. Yep. Any additional comments or questions? Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Eric, did you want to? 
No, I'll give the recommendation. There's two case items, so specifically for agenda item three, staff recommends approval of a waiver to section 5399 sidewalks, and then approval of the preliminary plat subject to the seven conditions in the report. Um, I guess, you know, we talked about this at great detail in the pre-meeting, if you do have specific questions, um, you know, I guess I didn't go into a lot of detail here, but I, I can do so. The waiver of the sidewalks is uh, due to the location in the Oakland exurban zone as well as the floodway, so that's commonly supported in this area. Final plant. I'm sorry, thank you. And also approval of the final plat subject to the conditions of preliminary plat approval and submittal of a final subdivision agreement prior to city council. Do we have a motion? I move approval of the waiver to section 5399 sidewalks and approval of the preliminary plat subject to meeting the seven conditions outlined in the report and approval of the final plat subject to the conditions of the preliminary plat approval and submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement prior to forwarding the request on the city council for final action. Second. We have a motion and second. Kathy, please record the vote. Pate? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rose Sarker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved seven to zero. Agenda item number six. Yeah, for agenda item six, I guess I'll get into a few of the specifics here just for this, um, placing it on the record. So, of course, this case had been previously laid over a couple times back in 2022. Uh, the applicant has obviously provided sufficient information for us to recommend approval. Um, there are 67 total pad sites, which is a, um, a, a decrease from what was previously approved, proposed of uh, over 100 uh, sites. There are a few zoning uh, waivers that are being requested and being supported. Some of that is dealing with um, providing circulation on non-paved areas. So that does not account for the entrance off of the, the public street of River Road Drive or the ADA compliant parking stalls. Outside of that, uh, there are gravel areas, but because of the floodway, that is typically supported by staff. Uh, we have other conditions that account for uh, the operations, um, you know, kayaks, canoes, tubing can't be a commercial operation, just utilized by those uh, using the campground. There's commentary on golf carts and prohibit of those. We are supporting a waiver of allowing camping in excess of 30 days. Um, there's commentary and stipulations as far as the RVs and restroom facilities being highway ready, as well as support from uh, the Plumbing Board and Zoning Board of Appeals regarding those temporary restroom facilities. Of course, the operation will need to comply with the floodplain uh, development regulations that the City of Omaha has in place. Um, that includes a no-rise certificate provided, signed and sealed by registered professional engineer. Staff recommends approval of conditional use permit to allow campground in the AG district subject to the 10 conditions in the report. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve conditional use permit to allow campground in the AG district subject to the 10 conditions in the staff report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Sotolongo? Yes. Rose Sacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Morris? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 to 0. Agenda item number 8, case C3 24 162. Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha. Request approval of the Workforce Housing Round 3 TIF Redevelopment Project Plan. Location southeast of 40th and Lake <coughs> Streets. And Don, you're presenting. Uh, yeah, good afternoon. Don Seaton, Omaha City Planning. Uh, this is an affordable housing development in North Omaha uh, by Holy Name Housing Corporation. Uh, they have 11 vacant single-family lots that are being replatted and reconfigured into 13 vacant lots. They're going to develop uh, a total of 13 single-family detached homes, one on each of these lots. They're asking for $538,197 in TIF support, which includes capitalized interest. It's about a $3.8 million project. These homes will be for sale homes for um, income qualified households. Um, the project complies with the city's master plan been approved by the TIF committee and we ask for your uh, approval. Thank and you, Don. Incidentally, the houses look pretty much like this. Any other proponents? Good afternoon, Matthew Cavanaugh, Holy Name Housing Corporation, 4324 Fort Street. Um, so yeah, I'm 
the applicant. This is, I'll just say quickly, happy to answer any questions, but this is part of, um, we were here last month for another similar project, same house, same neighborhood, but smaller. That was a rental project that's gonna complement this one. So uh, we're basically trying to focus on this Erskine Park neighborhood redevelopment, infill housing. Um, so as Don said, these units will be for sale. So these 13 will complement the four that uh, we were here for TIF for last month, um, for, which will be permanent rentals. Um, happy to answer any questions. How, how soon do you think the units would be available uh, once uh, approved? Is quick, so we're ready, we have the financing and we have, uh, we're prepared to begin construction as soon as uh, the TIF is approved. So we can finish the unit about six months and be on a staggered timeline from there. So first one, six months from TIF approval and then the last one would be probably about every two weeks, um, you know, pending any other un unforeseen circumstances. So between six and 12 months for the whole supply. For all of these? Yeah, so this is under the state's workforce housing program. So we have uh, a pot of money that we lend to ourselves. It's a revolving loan fund that we use as a, a construction financing to finance the construction of these homes. So we have the money already secured from the state between uh, with a match from philanthropy and we'll lend it to ourselves as construction financing. So that's a 0% construction loan. That's another source of, of subsidy in the project. And then we sell the homes and revolve it and hopefully come back here and talk to you about the next time we're doing it. Yeah, you did a great job with this one. We're doing it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close public hearing. Additional comments, questions? Eric. You know, obviously there's a great need for uh, more affordable housing units in all shapes and forms, so we always appreciate working with our partners who provide that type of, type of housing. Staff recommends approval. Do we have a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Rose Thacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 to 0. We'll take agenda items number 12 and 22 together. Uh, agenda item number 12, case C10-62-81, C10-10-94, C10-24-166, C12-24-167. Applicant Alameda Leavenworth LLC request preliminary and final plat approval of Kiewitz Subdivision Replat 1 a minor plat inside city limits with rezoning from R7 and GC to TOD 2 MX along with the repeal of the ACI overlay and PK overlay for a portion of the site. Location southeast of 27th and Leavenworth. Agenda item number 22 KC 10-24-168. Applicant Alameda Leavenworth LLC request approval of a PUR plan unit redevelopment overlay district. Location southeast to 27th and Leavenworth Street. May we hear from the applicant, please? Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for your work this evening. This afternoon, I think we're the only ones in the city working at this point today. Um, I'm uh, Tom McClay, 5200 Webster Street uh, here in Omaha. Uh, I am the co developer of this project along with Brett West uh, with a surety life insurance company, uh, is here as well. Uh, we've been uh, uh, working on this, this particular land for probably a, almost a decade now. Uh, but uh, excited about this project. As you've seen, it's 194 units, um, a, a Class A apartment product, uh, a, a richly amenitized project, um, uh, uh, providing you know, really a good, a good draw, a good reason to um, start to pull the development down Leavenworth Street. I think this is the right project and the right location at the right time. Um, there's been some really good development coming along Leavenworth Street, as you might have all seen, west of the interstate. Um, this project, I think, has the gravity to start pulling the development further towards downtown. Uh, we are in the zone of influence for the streetcar uh, on the, the very southern edge. Uh, to create a, a bookend, I think, for that further development that will happen within the streetcar. I'm happy to answer any questions you all have um, and uh, appreciate your support. Any questions for Tom? Thank you, Tom. 
Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Additional comments or questions? Before we hear from Sydney, were you going to say something? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Eric. Yeah, so um, just kind of reiterate what Tom had mentioned. There's been a lot of activity um, along Leavenworth Street, you know, especially as you head further west, closer to the Med Center. Um, so, you know, we think it's an exciting project. Has taken a little while to get here. Obviously, there was a previous <coughs> version, but, um, you know, we, we are excited for more housing in close proximity to the urban core. And um, specifically for agenda item number 12, staff recommends approval of the rezoning from R7 and GC to TOD2MX. Approval of the repeal of the ACI 1 overlay district. Approval of the repeal of the PK overlay district. Approval of the preliminary plat subject to the five conditions. Approval of the final plat subject to a final subdivision agreement prior to city council. Do we have a motion? I'll move for the approval of rezoning the site from R7 and GC to TOD 2MX. Approval of the repeal of the ACI 1 PL district, approval of the repeal of the PK overlay district, approval of the preliminary and final plat subject to the following five conditions, and approval of the final plat um, subject, subject to compliance with the conditions of preliminary plat approval and submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement prior to forwarding to city council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Fate? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved seven to zero. We're going to take agenda items oh, number oh, thirty. One second. Number twenty two. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm sorry. so this is the PUR yeah. component. I just wanted to mention, you know, there's a few items that will have to be finalized before it goes forward to city council um, that are identified in the recommendation report as far as building materials, um, just making sure that the calculation on the transparency requirement is, is being done on the south facade, especially with the garage uh, portion being exposed, um, a few, few other items like that. So we'll just need to coordinate on finalization of those plans, but staff recommends approval of the PUR overlay subject to submittal of acceptable plans prior to city council. Do we have a motion? Can I ask you a question, Tom, real quick before we take a motion? Please? Sure. I just was almost out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw you try to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had a neighborhood meeting? What was that? Have you had a neighborhood meeting? Uh, we, I have uh, reached out. We've heard from some neighbors. I've reached out to a number of neighbors. <coughs> there does not appear to be a, a regular neighborhood meeting that occurs. Um, I have talked with Councilman Begley. Uh, this is his district about uh, neighborhood representatives. Uh, he is uh, identifying folks uh, to uh, have further discussions, uh, but um, we uh, have spoken with them, and then there's an, another neighborhood association in the north that uh, I do plan on attending. It, we're not actually in that neighborhood association, but we would look at attending um, that in, in the upcoming uh, month before uh, city council. Yeah, because we got some correspondence from neighbors, as you might expect from this, uh, mostly regarding the concern of parking, mm -hmm. which several of us on the board at the pre-meeting also expressed some concern over too. So you want to talk <laughs> a little bit about that? Um, parking, yeah. it, it, the parking ratio is allowed under the under the current designation, but yeah, we see the lack of parking in that area already. Yeah, the, I, I, we did receive a copy of one correspondence from a California resident um, who owns a rental property there. Um, the other folks I've spoken with uh, around uh, the location uh, understood that as the, as the area densifies and uh, the streetcar comes through and we start having those uses, um, they understood that parking is part of it. Um, there is, um, a, 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 we've, we've maximized really the parking we could on the site. We've really gotten every nook and cranny um, to make sure that we do have parking there. Uh, I, d I will know one of the conditions was working with um, uh, Orbit, uh, not Orbit, sorry, Metro uh, <coughs> Transit, uh, have already met with them, talked with them about where they want to locate the bus stop on this site. Uh, they um, said they were willing to, uh, as part of that conversation, they said they'd be happy to come and speak and explain how Metro Transit would like a project like this. 
thinks it's it's the right type of use um, uh, for to continue to enhance our metro transit system. There will be a stop right on our property. And you're okay uh, right, with that? Yeah, cor yeah, it will be right. It's there's one there already, okay. um, so we will continue to have a spot right on Leavenworth there, uh, going down uh, east towards Omaha, uh, down, downtown Omaha. Uh, so I think the combination of we already have a, st a, st a, st a bus stop there. We have a streetcar here in the works. Um, we have um, uh, is you know maximize really the good a good amount of parking in this project in the basement adjacent to it. Um, uh, I think we're we're in good shape with it. Um, uh, you know the the neighborhood as I said West and Leavenworth has been developing. Um, you know I I believe well uh, and there's been some. Um, uh, kerfuffle, I'll use the word, uh, uh, at parking there, and I think that's showing through time to have been overblown, and <laughs> it's it's finding its level. Um, I sometimes view, um, I, I did quite a bit of work in the Blackstone District developing a lot of that, and and I view parking as it's kind of like water; it finds its level. You know, it finds it finds a way, and 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 that's what I think is materialized in the the other parts of the city. So we're, we feel good about it. Um, we're not concerned that the market won't accept this project. We think it will. Um, obviously, we're putting a lot of money, time, and effort into it, uh, which to me speaks volumes. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the PR plan unit redevelopment overlay district subject to submittal of available PR plans prior to the submittal to the city council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Tate? Yes. Sotolonga? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved seven to zero. Agenda item number 13 and 24 we'll take together. Agenda item number 13 is case C10-24-171. C12-24-172. Applicant McGill Industrial Park LLC and Burlington Park 2 LLC request preliminary plat approval of McGill Industrial Park, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG and G to GI and HI. Northeast location, northeast of Rainwood Road and Blair High Road. And agenda item number 24, case C8 24 173, applicant Burlington Park 2 LLC request approval of a special use permit to allow scrap and salvage services in the GI district. Location north of 111th Street and Rainwood Road. And Brent, you're up. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Brent Beller, 1140 West Center Road. On behalf of the applicants, so we actually have two applicants on this, and that's Burlington Capital. I'm sorry. Burlington Park uh, Industrial and Jesse Calabretto is here on behalf of them and then also uh, McGill uh, Industrial Park. Um, we actually, there's, there's two acreages here. There's the north acreage, which I'll show you in a minute, and then there's the Frost property, which is currently under contract by Burlington Park. So they're going to co-develop this industrial park uh, as one single development. But I want to start real quick just because, answer any questions. So Industrial right now is a use we need in our city. Uh, and like all cities, industrial ground is, is few and far to come between. Uh, so you can kind of see the gray areas on our future land map, this is from the city of Omaha's comprehensive plan, uh, shows obviously north of the airport along I-80 and then up here to the north, there is some untapped industrial ground, uh, which is where this project's gonna be. So here's the actual site, it's bordered in orange here. Uh, I'm going to draw a line right there. North here, that's McGill. So they've owned this property for a while now. Um, they wanted to do an industrial development here, but the issue on this particular piece of property is it doesn't, it, it didn't have sewer. You needed to have this property go in order to get ser services up to this northern property. Uh, this property is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Frost. This is their homestead. This is where they live and farm. Uh, they have elected to sell that property. And so when they did that, uh, developers see that and they go and they try to buy this property, which is currently under contract. Um, but this is, as you know, this is how developers do development. We follow the comprehensive plan. This has been master plan, this area for industrial. Um, if you go south on Blair High Road, this is Rain, Rainwood Point. I actually represent that SID. That's an industrial development. If you go further south, there's more industrial uses all along uh, Blair High Road, 
Uh, in fact, there's right in here, there's a car salvage type uses. Um, and then west of here, uh, if you've driven out that way, there's a ton of use. Uh, I think it's secretive. I don't know what it is per se, but it's been intense and they've been at it for a couple years now as we sit and have watched that development go. Um, but 198 acres here. Uh, it's an industrial development, so we do have that mix of GI and HI. And so here's our actual plan. And I'm sorry, Kyle Hasse with ENA Engineering. Uh, he's actually, he's here and he's the one who put this beautiful plan together. So the lighter purple is all our GI development. There'll be 19 lots in total. The two darker purple, that's the HI. So 46 acres of the 198, just under a quarter will be HI. Um, it's, you know, the, the issue on this particular uh, development will be just how we grade it, how we do it all together. This site kind of flows from the north to the south. So all of our water, all the grade, we will be pushing dirt down to this general area to kind of follow the contours of the site. Um, we had a neighborhood meeting uh, on Monday night. It was pretty well attended. 10 to 15 people came out. We sent those notices on June 21st uh, to make sure people had enough time to, to get notice of the meeting. Uh, and we had a lot of questions from folks that uh, border this, these particular lots. Um, learned a lot in the sense that uh, some of them have, have built the homes, some of them uh, have built them and lived them and sold them. Uh, and so they were curious mainly about what we call Street B right here. This is a, a connection that will connect to that frontage road. Um, the, the issue on that, and as your staff recommendation report notifies you, um, we don't know if this connection will actually be made. Uh, we, only, we don't know that only because NDOT controls uh, Highway 133, Blair High Road. And so there's some conversations that will have to be had as to whether or not this connection will be made. Uh, and I think we support the city's uh, connectivity policy. We obviously want connectivity, but if this road goes away, it doesn't cause us any heartburn, it's just less cost. And that's really up to the city and DOT and Douglas County as to how that goes. Um, otherwise, um, questions on traffic. The majority of traffic is gonna go here. This is why this is industrial. This is Blair High Road, this is our main artery. If you've driven out that way, you're gonna see that OPPD and DOT, they're all going to town improving this access way as a way to get to I-680. And that's why this is really important for industrial. But the majority of our traffic will all go west to Blair High Road. Um, this connection up here on Bennington Road uh, will be made. Uh, and the reason that's being made is NDOT eventually will have this intersection be a full movement intersection. It's lighted right now, but we are told that eventually there'll be on and off ramps and it'll look more like an interstate interchange than it does now. Uh, the other major uh, entry and exit is this entrance right here on Rainwood. That will be, we'll have a stoplight there. Uh, SID 552, which is Rainwood Point, um, which is right here. They actually have in their subdivision agreement that when this property is all developed, uh, there's a cost sharing that will go on for that street light. So none of the other neighbors, whether to the east, I'm sorry, whether to the east or to the west will contribute to any of that. And so we, we uh, had a healthy conversation with some of the residents just explaining everything that we're doing won't impact them at all from a financial um, perspective as, as far as contributing to anything that we're doing right now. Um, so the other item that's, so that's for our preliminary, for preliminary plat today. The other item in front of you is actually a special use permit uh, for lot 17. So this is lot 17 right here. And that special use permit is for scrap and salvage. Um, I know, and, and Eric, I don't wanna get out ahead of myself, but I know the city has contemplated whether or not we change GI zoning to allow for scrap and salvage within the GI, but I don't think that's been done yet. So we still go with the special use permit which is what we're requesting here. The use here, and this is the only piece of property that we um, have any users under contract for, uh, is a concrete recycling plant. So if you've seen those around town, um, this particular user is called Crushing It. They have about three or four operations, I believe, in and around Omaha, top-notch operator. Uh, they use state-of-the-art sort of water dampening systems, misting facilities to make sure that any concrete or dust stays on site. Uh, that's both required by EPA, that's required by the city of Omaha, and it's also required via our covenants that we'll have privately on this development. Uh, they also do, they have to have, have formal street sweeping, all that sort of stuff to keep, make sure their site uh, stays clean. But otherwise, this will function like an industrial development. Burlington Park, uh, we actually did this almost identical development out in Gretna, and it's been a huge success. And most of the users, people here industrial, and they think, scrap and salvage, car recycling. That's not really what is gonna go on. If you look at Burlington Park, we have uh, sports 
youth, we have a, a church, we have city offices, we have uh, lawn mowing companies, those types of, of folks that go and want these sorts of larger acreages for their storage of equipment and that sort of thing. And really the, the industrial code is heavy on the screening and make sure that we don't see all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's what we envision will be exactly here too. And of course, there's a, a number of other uses that can come in here as far as uh, commercial uses and, and retail. Um, but the majority of the reality is it, it will be an industrial development. So um, I think I covered everything for now. I'll, I'll sit down and if there's any questions, I'm happy to come up and, and answer that. Obviously this comes before you uh, with the planning department's recommendation uh, of approval subject to the conditions for the preliminary plat. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Yeah, my name is uh, Bill Black, and I'm 10270 Rainwood Road. I own 90 acres there under High Caliber uh, Holdings, LLC. I'm the managing member there. Um, I made copies of everything that I'm about to, to share with you guys. And there's several neighbors here, too, that are in attendance that uh, we were not able to make the Monday night uh, meeting that they had with the neighbors. So I'll, uh, I'll start with this. So the property that's being proposed changing is, is right in this area. The area in the pink is what I own personally. And I've noted a few things on here. And in the packet, you're, gonna, you're going to uh, uh, see how many wells are in the area. Uh, just within less than a mile and a half, there's over two dozen uh, water wells in the area. And this is from the University of Nebraska. And the University of Nebraska, this is the aquifer that services the area. And this is where they want to put the industrial. Uh, and it's not just industrial, it's high industrial. And according to the city, um, you know, there can be environmental issues associated with a uh, high industrial uh, uh, area. Our concerns are many of us are on a well. Uh, zoning of that nature is inviting contamination of the aquifer. Uh, it'll increase the noise pollution. You've got the rock crushers going on. You've got the uh, skid loaders and, and loaders of that sort going on uh, during the day. Uh, so heavy equipment needs to operate in this type of a business, and we're opposed to that. It also brings health concerns uh, with hazardous chemicals that could possibly in a, be in a uh, heavy industrial area, asbestos and things of that nature. Uh, it'll bring huge problems with rodent population. A lot of us in this area, this is uh, uh, acreage subdivision or area, and uh, quite a few people have horses and, and other type of animals, and it's, it's hard enough right now to try to keep rodents out of there. And when you start putting in salvage yards and things of that nature, it's gonna increase that all the more. Uh, air pollution, you know, uh, possibility of that with the rock crushing and, and things of that nature going on. And then contamination of storm sewer water runoff from uh, operation like this. And then the other thing is the uh, huge impact, uh, negative impact it'll have on our property values. If you go back to the map here, uh, just within a uh, mile area, we've got several multi-million dollar properties in there. Uh, one of them is right next, right across the street from the property. Uh, the assessed value on this, and it's in the packet here, is 1.2 million. I'm a realtor by trade. I've been doing it for 40 years. I know real estate. I know valuations. And everybody knows that your assessed value is, is typically not what your market value is going to be. The market value will be higher. But when you have a industrial property next to an acreage division like this, it'll, it'll definitely impact that in a negative way. Um, there's another property right here that's uh, well over a million dollars. It'll be back right up to it. And they're not able to be here, but they did respond to the, uh, to the city planning and that they, they're adamantly opposed to it as well. And then there's also several neighbors here. And if you don't mind, I can, I can have them all stand up that are here. So anybody here that's a neighbor? 
So these, this is going to impact all of us, and we're, none of us are in favor of it. So we, uh, we ask that it be uh, denied. Uh, in, in all of my years of being a realtor, in the last decade, I don't know of any place where they've allowed high industrial next to residential acreages. Uh, it just it just doesn't exist. So this would be a, a very uh, rare situation. And I can see uh, commercial, light commercial. I can see light industrial, but heavy industrial, it it just doesn't it just doesn't fit. So I've got a packet here for everybody. I'll give that to you. You guys can peruse it and go from there. So thank you, thank you Bill. Any other opponents wishing to give your testimony? My name is Sherry Savick, and I currently lease um, out the barn and horse property at 10808 Rainwood Road. We have, I've got a couple concerns about this. Um, specifically, the biggest one is with the concrete crushing services. It has been proven with the uh, national health industries that silica dust that comes from crushing that concrete causes issues, respiratory issues with the lungs. It also causes long-term issues on your liver, your kidneys, uh, your brain, and, your, and obviously, again, on the lungs, some of these also causing cancer. I work outside. Yes, the barn is enclosed to an extent, but when it's 100 degrees outside, everything is open. The winds in this area, especially come winter time, you're talking 45 mile an hour plus wind gusts coming from the northwest. That is going to hit my entire it hit my entire business. The noise that's going to come with this concrete crushing is going to be huge. I have a very large program that is youth based, and horses are a prey species. They're going to do their best to hold together, but ultimately it's going to take a long time for them to be able to handle that kind of noise safely and for the kids to safely be able to be around them. Also, the noise that's gonna come with the grading. It's going to change on this property alone. I have not looked at any of the other properties how it's going to change. We have our drainage area goes to the north on some of the terraces on this property. That's going to change our entire drainage area. The big grading machines are also going to bring dangers again I've got horses right, I've got horses on that property. Those big machines that come through that McArdles and the other grading companies use are huge. They are noisy, they are going to be scary. Large machinery and horses unfortunately do not mix. This is one of the closest barns to Omaha and has a giant following and I'm in fact getting ready to push out again and market to a much larger group again. I could easily do in this, I'm currently doing 25 lessons a week, and that's after my daughter had a car accident. Otherwise, I was planning on being at almost 60 lessons a week by the end of this year. I'm gonna be going up again another 40 lessons a week. This is all very possible with where we're at, but they put it in heavy industry with a large equipment. I don't know how comfortable parents are gonna be with horses struggling with it, with them spooking. It's definitely kids and all of that. The horses and the kids do such great things. They help out with depression. They help out with ADHD. They help out with autism. They help keep depression the whole nine yards. These horses are amazing what they can do for our youth and what they can do for any of us adults. You put in something with these huge amount of vehicles that are going to be coming because there is no way that they're not going to be coming all the way up Rainwood Road to go, especially on the backside of this plat. You can only ask the animals to do so much of, they go against their nature so much and we already do as people. I don't wanna lose what this can do for our community and how many people the horses can help out. I don't wanna lose this ability to be here. Thank you, Sherry. Any other opponents? Hello, my name is David Dinspear, 10302 Rainwood Road. Um, most of the points that I would have brought up to you today have already been explained very well. The health impacts, 
rodents, inevitability. The health impacts, there's a lot of marginalization of what those really are with heavy industry like this. I believe to a degree it's inevitable. But one thing that hasn't been brought up, the aquifer was spoken about, the well water was spoken about, but we're also next to a lake that in my recent memory, the city has spent a lot of money making beautiful. What is the impact of this on a lake that's essentially a stone's throw away, Cunningham Lake? It's been emptied twice since I've been back in Nebraska. And that, I think, is symptomatic of the entire process of putting heavy industry that close to that kind of a beautiful public uh, space. So a lot of work and a lot of money has gone into making Lake Cunningham beautiful. I'm very opposed to any health impacts to the water supply on anyone's property, but in particular that was never mentioned and I wanted to make sure we're considering that as well. Thanks Thank very much. Any, any other opponents? Hello, my name is Carrie Brown. I live at 10930 North 108th Street. Their development will be surrounding my property. We have owned this property for over 120 years. This has been in our family. We are very disheartened by this coming into our area. As most everyone has said, it's going to bring health issues. It's going to detriment to our wells. This is, this is how we live. This is our water. This is our health. We didn't plan on having a junkyard uh, concrete crushing next to our house. This is a lot of noise. This is a lot of pollution. This is a lot of traffic, and there is already a lot of traffic in the area. On 108th Street, even though this has not been mentioned, there is considerable traffic now that we have people going in the excess of 60 miles an hour on a road that the speed limit is 45 that it is very dangerous for us to even be outside of our property because we have heavy equipment that is going running up and down our streets. Our actual dog was killed not long ago because said machinery was going up and down our road and our dog was killed. Also, that needs to be taken into effect is what is it going to impact on our lives? Like our neighbors who talked about the horse farm because they are on the other side of us. We are outside all the time. We have. 26.7 acres we farm we have parties we have family gatherings we have family reunions our our car club we use our property to you know get our cars ready to go for all of our car shows and it's it's going to be it's going to be detrimental to all of us that live in this area in, including lake cunningham as well because what is going to be the issue with the water that's going to be possibly contaminated by the concrete dust, what is going on with everything that these people are bringing. I understand progress is inevitable. No one can, you know, we can't say, no, you can't build. That, that's not what we're saying. We're saying, please take a look, like everyone has said. These are residential land. We all live here. We spend our lives here. Some of us have spent generation and generation and generation that have lived here. and. We, we do not want this heavy industrial in our area. We already have enough industrial, as they said, what's getting built across the street. Everyone knows Google is being built across the street. That, that's enough. Our noise just from that, I can sit at my house all hours of the night, 3 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, 8 a.m. It is noise constantly. So when these people bring in their business, it's going to add even more noise to that. I look, we can see through our treat area and see Google being built. So the, these people will be literally in our backyard, in our backyard. We do not want to have to look at a concrete crushing, crushing company. We're not gonna wanna look at a salvage yard. That, I mean, if you understand, it would be no different than it backing up to your house. Our property value is going to tank, just like he had spoke about. That, that's not okay with us. That's not okay with us at all. Like I said, we've owned these properties over 100 years. We have built many lives. We have built homes. It's, it's just very disheartening to us, especially as neighbors, that this is going to move in and it's going to interrupt our entire life. Um, thank you. I appreciate thank you. it. Thanks, Sherry. Any other opponents? Please give us uh, new information, if you would. Okay. 
My name is Joyce Faldus at 11313 Bennington Road. What I, was your first name? I, Joyce. Joyce, okay. As everyone has said, I'm not going to repeat it because you don't need to hear that. My biggest concern, though, is because we're off of Bennington Road, the access that they're talking about coming off of uh, onto Bennington Road is going to be very detrimental for traffic. Uh, that is at just about the crest of a hill, and I do not I see how they can possibly make it where it would be safe for anybody. There is so much traffic on Bennington Road. We're further down. We have the only... Uh, actual uh, access to the highway off of our property and there's times that it's very questionable when I I'm trying to even get onto my property because of the amount of traffic and how fast it comes over the hill so it is a very big detriment my other concern also is because of that north property it does drain onto my property and I'm very concerned of heavy industrial what it's going to do to the to again the aqua filter and also um, to what it's going to do to my property. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joyce. Any other opponents? Okay, seeing none, will you get? Okay. Please give us new information, if you would. Well, sort of new. <laughs> my name is Deb Raymond. I live on 108, um, excuse me, 114. 15 North 108th. I'm on the corner of Bennington Road and 108th. I also have horses. In addition to everything even Bill said, uh, the aquifer, I'm just curious as to this industrial stormwater, which will affect the aquifer. Also, the asbestos, if there's asbestos dump, uh, that dust or tailings, they're called. That floats in through the wind um, and the health risks with, associated with that. The heavy metals, um, that can be seepage into the water, stormwater runoff. Um, there's organic chemicals, which are in dyes, paints, solvents, sealants. That is all seepage into the aquifer. I agree with everyone else. Um, I'm against this completely. Um, as well as everyone else has said, our property values will um, be affected by this in a negative, negative way. So I wanted to clarify a little bit more on some of the stormwater contaminants, um, the asbestos, the heavy metals, the organic chemicals. So there's a lot more detail into the seepage that could go in and affect our aquifer and our private wells and our, and our waters. So thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents? Okay. Nope. Hi. My English is not very well. You have to get over okay. in, to the microphone. Kind of but pull them down if you would a little bit. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I'm Delia Havana. I sent a letter with a little sign, a little uh, neighborhood. They signed uh, the letter, and the, we are not happy because are, they are planning to to put a big building no. across our house. Different project. We could put, right? Nope. That's this not, one? That was earlier. Uh, yeah. Yep. It's okay. That was the last case, ma'am. Yeah. So and we we are not happy. All the neighbors are not happy. Um, it, I, okay, we're not on that that project any longer. We've moved past that project. Yeah. If if, if you wanted to speak, you would have had a. That was the case before this case. Yeah. This project was. Okay. And that's already been voted on. No further action will be taken today. No more. I apologize if there was any confusion and you missed it. But okay. Yeah, we've we've moved on. So, and I've closed the public hearing okay. to that to that agenda item. So I'm sorry. We sent a letter well, with a letter of signings. And yeah, okay. We received the letters that will need to go to city council. So you will have another chance yeah. to speak on it. Okay. Um, but it'll be at a, a later date. Okay. 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 Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Okay. We received the letter, though. Yes. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. Sorry yeah. for the confusion. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, are there any other opponents? Hello, uh, my name is Caroline Skinner. Uh, I'm here for my father, Jim Skinner, and myself. Uh, we own the property 10808 Greenwood Road, uh, which Sherry leases from us, and we've owned that for over 20 years. Um, I know we don't want repetitious uh, things going on or spoken, uh, but I do really want to hone in on how dangerous no like noise sounds are to horses. I am a national and world champion equestrian. One wrong sound landed me on my back with spine surgery, and I can't I can't ride anymore. So. This is really dangerous to the kids, honestly. Another point I would like to bring up is, <laughs> before I chose Sherry, um, Burlington Capital's foundation was interested in the property and I had turned them away. Um, I could see, and that was for their Omaha Equestrian Foundation, and I can't help but think that if the property was with them, that this would not be happening because they know of the dangers. So, thank you. Okay. Any other opponents? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Brent, I'll give you a chance to come up. A lot of uh, issues to be yeah. addressed. Brent Eller, 1140 West Center Road. Lots of good questions. Um, some, I think Cheryl may have come to our neighborhood meeting, but uh, others didn't. And, and usually we like to use those meetings to hammer out some of these questions, but we'll do that here. Um, so I think, the, the main themes that I'm hearing is uh, traffic, noise, uh, contamination. Uh, so let's talk about how that all works. Um, this dotted line right here, this is Lake Cunningham. Uh, one of the pro opponents had mentioned this is Lake Cunningham. This is the ridge line on this. All water flows this way away from Lake Cunningham it is virtually impossible to contaminate Lake Cunningham from anything that's going on with any of these existing industrial uses that are located currently in the gray areas. Um, I think Mr. Black had mentioned that he owns this property right here. This is obviously zoned or master plan for industrial, uh, but right down here is a scrap and alb if, if you look at the overhead for it, I think I have one, um, it kind of shows it. But there's, there's car scrapping going on down here. Those uses are there today. Um, that noise pollution that I think they talk about is there today. I can't speak to whether or not there is a speeding issue along 108th, but it sounds like there is. Um, but the reality is, is our development, other than the fact that we have to have this connection right here, nobody wants to go east. <coughs> off of our development. The whole reason why this is master plan for industrial is the fact that Blair High Road is right here and they have to get to the interstate quickly and easily. Um, the other thing I heard a lot about was stormwater contamination. So we have three basins, or actually four basins on this site. There's one on our north side, two on the south side. Um, they're there for a reason and that's because right here, right here, and right here are all the existing channels where stormwater goes. The water flows to the west down to this creek. In fact, we're going to bore a line that's going to go underneath Blair High Road to take the water from the north part of this site down to this stream. So anybody that lives over here, they will get no contaminants, even if there was a possibility that we would have any sort of asbestos or hazardous materials on our site, which we won't. It's going to go to the west. It'll never go uphill because again, this is your ridge line. Everything flows that way. I'm, we wanna be good developers and frankly, Mr. Calabretto and Mr. McGill are that. Uh, they care about their developments and I would encourage all the opponents to go out to Burlington Park and that industrial development out there and, and take a look at what that looks like. Um, in fact, there is a batch plan out there right next door, a batch plan, that's one of the concerns. Uh, there's a bar right adjacent to it that is filled every single weekend with people. Uh, and the reality is, is I've been in front of this board many times for batch plants. Uh, batch plants are everywhere throughout our city. Most of the time people don't see them. And I get the concerns that whether it's horses or dust, uh, people are concerned about what that might be. But like they mentioned, change isn't inevitable. Uh, this is zoned for a master plan for industrial. Um, and that's what developers do. It, when this ground becomes available, uh, 
People want to put industrial type uses on there. But the reality of, of any sort of what groundwater contamination flowing uphill and contaminating any of these, these acreages over here, uh, it, that's feasibly impossible. Um, notwithstanding their concerns about it are legit and hopefully that our conversations with them will continue in that. And we're pretty open book and, and I think you've seen me up here enough to know that this is preliminary plat. We still gotta go to city council and we gotta still come back here. So we wanna answer a lot of these questions and we'll always make ourselves available to all these opponents to ask those questions because that's how good development should be done. Um, let me make sure I got everything else. Um, we'll have a traffic study. That traffic study will obviously go to the city of Omaha uh, and Douglas County and NDOT. They're the ones that control all the traffic study. They're the ones that dictate where these streets go. Uh, they dictate the connections and whether or not uh, how this intersection on, on Bennington Road, I'm sorry, on Bennington Road gets done, uh, whether or not we have the connection here off of the Blair service, the, the service road, and then ultimately this traffic signal down here. Um, the, the, the horse issue, um, all I can say on to that is we are still subject to the city of Omaha's zoning code, meaning there is a noise ordinance that we have to comply with. Uh, currently, this site, which bore, this is the horse farm, I believe, um, we met Cheryl and her husband the other, the other night. Um, currently, this whole site is a operating farm. There is cattle there. Um, it's <laughs> with cattle, becomes smells, there's methane, there's all those sorts of issues uh, going on right here. This has been a full functioning farm for as long as Mr. Frost, as I understand, has owned this property. I don't imagine a situation that, number one, we're gonna violate the city of Omaha's zoning code with respect to sound, the sound ordinance, nor do I think we'll do anything or emit any sort of odors that are any different than what cattle operations are. Uh, and again, that's on us. I'm, I'm sensitive to the fact that people don't like to see grading, and that was a lot of the questions that we had at the neighborhood meeting the other night. In a perfect world, uh, we would start grading later this year, but most likely next year. Uh, and that's probably a year's worth of development. So as we told the neighbors the other night, it's probably a year worth of us grading public infrastructure, call it 16 months of work before you see platted lots and that sort of construction activities done. Um, but otherwise, we get it. It's industrial. It's master plan for industrial. It will be a change for folks. But at the same time, I can represent and look everyone in the eye that you got two developers that know what they're doing. They care about people. They want to be good neighbors. Uh, but but it, but it is a change and we're sensitive to that. So I, I think I covered everything, but if I didn't, please do let me know. I have a question, Brett. Uh, is this site subject to industrial stormwater discharge permit? I'm sorry? Is this site subject to industrial stormwater discharge permit? Absolutely, yeah. So all, all sort of, w we will collect, treat all of our stormwater on site in compliance with all the stormwater protection requirements of the city of Omaha, as well as NDEQ, the Nebraska Department of Our Environmental Quality. Anything that touches down here can't be contaminated. We can't be dropping hazardous waste into these streams. I mean, that, that's federal, that's state, that's local as well. Also, can you address the, the dust control that they use? Yeah, so one of the things that you probably saw in your packets, but I didn't mention in my initial brief, is there is a whole host, and we can share this with, a, with some of the neighbors that had concerns about how this is actually done, what their, um, their crushing operation looks like, how they control the dust. And so really what it is, is as they bring in concrete, it's unloaded. There are particular, or uh, what do they call them? They're basically moisture guns that shoot very fine mist over all the concrete to control all the dust. It's done in every batch plant in Omaha. And that's why you don't really hear a lot of complaints about it because these guys are really good at what they do. They control that mist. Because if we have an ounce of that dust going on to a farm or a horse or a neighbor, we get calls. And so nobody does that. And so. This is a first class operation that we're bringing in here. We wouldn't have crushing it if we didn't think that they were the best at what they do. And this, this will be their fifth location here in Omaha. And then the sound, the, the, what's, what are the sounds? How loud are, is it and stuff like that? Yeah, it's, it's no sound that, I forget the requirements of what our sound can be as it leaves our site, but it doesn't violate and they won't violate anything that's in this, the sound ordinance here in the city of Omaha, but for me to, I couldn't pretend to know what the exact uh, decibel unit is, but it's not in violation of what is re uh, allowed under the sound ordinance. Well, in your document, you just said the current readings average 65 to 70 decibels at 150 feet. Uh, and so, I mean, that's not yeah. allowed. So, 
and, and just to be mindful of that, this is the lot, Mr. Rosehacker, that that use will be on. We have a 70 foot buffer. That's what the green is around all of our properties. So that distance over here is well in excess of 150 feet. You're probably five, 600 feet away. Plus this, this site sits far above. And so tr that sound will likely go that way just because of the natural topography, they sit up higher. We talked to, to Cheryl and her husband about our grading efforts. We're not gonna leave them a knife edge. This will be a nice clean look so their property will flow and look nice. But um, yeah, that, that sound is, is obviously in compliance with all the zoning ordinances. Thank you. Additional comments or questions? Brent, you mentioned that you only have one lot under contract and it's that crush it, it's crushing correct. it. Um, and that's outside of the heavy industrial zone. Do you have an idea of what is contemplated for the heavy industrial portion of this development? We don't. I, what we wanted to do is we wanted to have an all-encompassing industrial use. Um, you can look at all the allowed uses, and those allowed uses are gas stations. You can have uh, manufacturing inside. Um, but really, the one that people latch on to is a batch plant. A batch plant is where they make cement. Uh, that is an allowed use here. So you could see a batch plant here, foreseeable, uh, but nothing else is currently under contract. Any additional comments, questions? There, thank you, Brent. Thank you. Yeah, so um, just to touch on a few items. Um, our future land use map of the city of Omaha's comprehensive plan has basically been in its current form since 1997. That was the, the date of the adoption of the, of the last master plan uh, version. So um, this area has not been modified from that date. So this area has been designated industrial since at least 1997. I don't know what the map showed prior to that. Uh, so I did just want to stress that. Obviously, there's a dividing line on 108th Street that, you know, to the east, it shows low density residential, and then to the west is the industrial, kind of what Brent had alluded to. And, you know, obviously, there, there can be challenges sometimes when you have adjacent, you know, use types that, are, that can be so different. But the zoning code and the master plan do allow for that and that's how we build in landscape buffer yards and so um, the master plan and zoning code do allow i'm not going to call commingling but you know direct adjacency of of industrial and and then residential uses um, obviously we want to make sure that there's no contamination into any private wells or the drinking water uh, so we have commentary in the report to to make sure that there's further coordination between the developer and the applicant uh, with our public works department who deal with these environmental issues as well as the state of Nebraska. Um, so we do have conditions and, and commentary to, to make sure that um, you know, the highest and best standards are being utilized with this operation or potential uses to account for that because obviously we do not want um, you know, an unsafe you know, contamination or seepage of, of inappropriate materials into that drinking water. Obviously, we feel the same. We do have public works available if there are questions on access and, and streets. I know a lot of that wasn't necessarily discussed. Um, we talked quite a bit about that in the pre-meeting. Regarding the two proposed lots for HI, um, the city of Omaha, we, we do want to make sure that we are, um, you know, locking down any potential uses. So there is verbiage in our recommendation about further coordination of what that looks like between the applicant and, and the city of Omaha, both with the law department and the planning department. Uh, you know, there's discussion about development agreement. You know, maybe that's not the best method in conversations with our law department and, and looking more at, um, you know, a land use deed restriction that, that really ties down, um, you know, to make sure that, you know, the city of Omaha is comfortable with whatever those potential uses are allowed. Of course, the majority of the site is being proposed for GI General Industrial, which is um, the most common uh, industrial zoning district whenever you have new uh, applications that are being brought forward. So 
uh, specifically for those two H those two HI proposed lots, we want to just make sure that there's further coordination. So our recommendation on, on that is is basically just to continue the coordination. Um, you know, you have two cases on today's agenda. One is is the plat and the rezoning, and then the other one is the specific special use permit for the scrap and salvage operation, which is the crush in it that um, that Brent had alluded to, and you know we talked about the dust cannon and, and mist, and we we did deal with this operator on a, um, a nearby site, actually uh, much closer to the downtown area. So, uh, you know, the board, you are a little familiar with some of those conversations that we had in the past few months. The special use permit would not proceed to city council until the final plat does. So, um, you know, that's specifically agenda item number 24. That's not going to proceed. Um, you know, for some time for whenever that final plat is brought back to the planning board. So, you know, if if the board does recommend approval of the preliminary plat, you know, that would be the only item at this time that would proceed to city council. Um, you know, I just wanted to, to put that out there. We're comfortable with the proposed operation of crushing it, um, which is the special use permit. Um, there aren't many conditions that are tied to that, just a few landscape. Uh, um, I'd have to look. There was just one or two items that need to be addressed as far as the city's codes and recommendations. I don't think I have much else to add unless the board has specific questions either from myself or for Public Works as it relates to items under their purview. So unless there are questions, I'll read the recommendation. Of course, you can continue conversation or, or ask questions at that time. Staff recommends approval of the rezoning from AG to GI for lots 1 through 5, 7 through 17, 19, outlots A through D, and continue to coordinate with city staff regarding the rezoning to HI and a land use restriction for lots 6 and 18. Staff recommends approval of the preliminary plat subject to the 25 conditions in the recommendation report. Any comments or questions before we have a motion? I just wanted to make a kind of a quick comment. Um, this ground has been designated for industrial for 27, close to 30 years. I know that doesn't say much to people that have had homes or acreages out here for a lot of years before that. Um, unfortunately, as the city grows, uh, you know, development keeps growing and, and getting into people's areas and that they never thought. I remember back in the 60s, um, that was out in the country where you were. I used to uh, chase cattle uh, calves up in the hayloft of the frost, frost barn. We'd wrestle with them up there. It's been, I mean, you were clear out in the country then and it's, times are changing. We farmed at 204th and Pacific back in the 50s and that farm doesn't exist anymore. Things change, but uh, I understand people that are living there and have property there, and, and uh, unfortunately, change happens. But um, that's the only comment I have, I guess. No, sir. I just the uh, wait a second. You can't. You can speak. You can't, sir. You can't speak from the from the uh, audience and we've closed the public hearing. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, thank you for your remarks. Appreciate that. I agree with what you're saying and I'll just make a comment and then I'll make the motion as well. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming out. I know you're taking time out of your day um, to spend here to give us your testimony. It is important to us. We'd love to hear from you. But Mr. Chairman uh, articulated it very well about how this project or property is designated and so on and so forth. I know Brent is sincere when he says he's transparent He's been before us board many times, continue to have the discussions, and I know you will with the neighbors, because that is important with this. Um, but with that said, I'm going to go ahead and make the motion to approve the rezoning from AG to GI for lots 1 through 5, 7 through 17, 19, allow lots A through D, and continue to coordinate with the city staff regarding rezoning to HI and a land use restriction for lot 6 and 18, and approval of the preliminary plat subject to the 
25 conditions, and there's 25 conditions in this report, so the city has many conditions that they have to meet before this will be approved. 25 conditions in the report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, will you record the vote? Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Tate? Yes. Soto Longo? Uh, with those use restri restrictions on those heavy industrial sites, um, I do support this and I will vote yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved seven to zero. And item number 24. So specifically item, uh, case agenda item 24, this is the scrap and salvage special use permit. So as I mentioned previously, this would not proceed to city council until the final plat does, um, which could take some time. It depends on uh, how quickly that comes back um, to the planning board. Staff recommends a approval of the special use permit to allow scrap and salvage services in the GI district subject to the five conditions in the recommendation report. Do we have a motion? A motion to approve. Special use permit to allow scrap and salvage services in the GI district subject to the five conditions in the recommendation report. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Morris? Yes. Tate? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Uh, before I vote, Jesse, real quick. Have you ever thought of changing it from Burlington Park to Frost Industrial uh, Park? Uh, yeah, we just used Burlington Park because it was, we, it was a, you know, essentially a, the same group, the same people that did everything in Burlington. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just, just a suggestion. I think we can make that. Uh, okay, Leroy Frost is a pretty good guy. Or yes. Or Approved <laughs> seven to zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Agenda item number 15. Am I correct there? Yep. yep. Agenda item number 15, KC 10 99 84. Applicant Derek Reinhardt request approval of a major amendment to the mixed use district development agreement for West Point. Location 15504 Spalding Plaza. And may we hear from the applicant, please? Um, Derek Reinhardt, 18932 Nicholas Street. Um, I don't really have anything other to add than what was on the, what was submitted, but um, there was one point I want to bring up that it says I'm trying to switch it to kennel use. Um, I'm not looking to house dogs outside just for them to use the restroom and have a little time outside. Um, kennel, if you look at the zoning, as you guys know, it's like housing dogs outside overnight. You can do whatever you want, basically. But there's really no middle ground of having dogs inside most of the time while allowing them to have bathroom breaks. Um, from my understanding, this has been there since 2007. Found out it's not in code. Um, I've only been there since 2020. But it's been there for 17 years without any complaints until recently from a new competitor. That's all I got other than what was in the report, unless you guys had any questions. Anything for Derek? Yep. So you're, you're not intending to house dogs overnight or extended stays, anything like that, nope. or well, animals all, of any kind, I guess. But. Nope, all that's done inside. This is just for to go to the bathroom outside, play outside for a little bit. Um, that's really it. There's no cage, there's no enclosures or anything outside. You already have an area designated outside for that? What's that? You have an area already designated. Yeah, it's already in place. It's in place out there, yeah. Yep. It's about 2,000 square feet fenced in area, uh, to 1,000 roughly. Yeah. Or animals out there at um, in each area, they can be about 20 to 25. Okay. Any complaints from neighbors about the parking or anything like that in the past? I, I haven't heard of any. Um, it's been there since 2007. Um, I've only been there since 2020 when I bought the business, it was already in place. Um, I have not had any complaints personally brought to my attention. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Derek. Yep, any other proponents? Seeing none, is there any opponents? Seeing none, close public hearing. Any additional comments, questions? Eric? Yeah, so we spent some, uh, a good amount of time discussing this and another one that was uh, on consent agenda for, that was laid over um, earlier at today's meeting. Um, there have been several cases that have gone to the Zoning Board of Appeals because this site is zoned mixed use. Uh, that is not an option because of the mixed use development agreement. As we discussed in, in the pre-meeting, there are uh, limited zoning districts where the kennel use is allowed, and that is AG zoning, DR zoning, CH, which is commercial highway, and 
not a lot that exists in the city, and then also GC general commercial. So, um, you know, the city acknowledges there are limitations. Uh, we are exploring, you know, is it appropriate for other um, zoning districts, such as specifically the industrial districts, which would not apply to um, any area that zone mixed use. Those obviously defer to commercial um, uses and regulations, um, as is typical. So, we understand it, you know, it's challenging when you have animals that need to use the restroom and you know there are some facilities and sites that um, have special treatments and floors that allow that inside others um, take out their dogs on you know staff take them out on leashes um, you know on, on walks or to relieve themselves so uh, we understand that, that it can be challenging when you do have larger operations however um, you know we have concern about just the the potential negative impact to surrounding properties. Yes, this does appear that it's been functioning this way for quite some time. This is the first time that we had received a complaint um, based on another case that had gone through the Zoning Board of Appeals. So um, we believe it's important though that um, the kennel use is not allowed in, in commercial zoning, in, including mixed use. Uh, we believe there can be other operation characteristics that can handle the animals relieving themselves or getting exercise. So um, staff recommends denial. Okay, any additional comments, questions? Do we have a motion? And Mike, were you gonna say something? Yeah. Go ahead. So this business has been operating this way for a long time. They can continue to operate that way now. They should not have the outdoor fenced in areas but they've had it. They right. have, okay. without proper permitting or right. without proper permission from Understood. the city of Omaha. And this was a reaction to a complaint from a competitor, is am I correct? It was a complaint from someone who had received a complaint on their operation that went to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And as a result of that, we did send a zoning uh, violation letter to this operator. Okay, thank you. The way, uh, as a denial, uh, does that mean that the business ends in a certain period of time if they kept everything the same, or do they have time to adjust and say, we're going to develop an indoor potty area for the dogs, or how, how does that work uh, with this denial? Uh, is, there, is there things they, c they can do to, to keep the business uh, in, in uh, good status in the mixed-use area? Well, uh, the, the last sentence in the report says, if denied, the outdoor areas will need to be removed. So we would be looking at that fencing being removed as soon as possible. Is that all, would that be all 2,000 feet or uh, as he says, uh, or would there be a, any outdoor fencing at all? I, and I just want, I'm just all We would not want the fencing. I mean, the okay. actual outdoor area could stay, but the fencing allows those animals to be left out. So, so, <laughs> they, so they would have to uh, uh, walk the dogs or something. Yeah, to, theoretically, to if you had a staff member that had dogs on a leash that go out and they relieve themselves in that outdoor area that it, I That's think okay. that would be fine but there's obviously the fine line and that fencing makes it allow them to um, take them out free reign I, I don't know if our director has difference of opinion um, you know I guess we have you know, sometimes you go to a vet clinic and they have a sign that's posted outside their door, animal relief area, and you know, whether it's the staff or whether it's the people bringing in their right. animals on a leash, they're, you know, maybe utilizing, you know, just that designated area. I mean, that's, that's kind of typical what you would see. And, and I'm sorry, Eric, I'm sorry, I apologize if I missed this, but they could apply for a permit to, the proper permit to put the fence. No, not a lot. No, because it, basically, you know, you're allowing it to function as a kennel. And I know, you know, when you hear kennel, you're thinking about boarding and it, it places to sleep outside. But that when you look at the actual definition of kennel, and I'll, I'll read that briefly, uh, boarding and care services for dogs, cats, and similar small animals, or any premises on which four or more dogs over four months of age are kept and maintained, not exclusively indoors. Typical uses include boarding kennels, pet motels, or dog training centers. It doesn't have to be a, a boarding component. It could be a daytime operation, but it's that whenever you have that outdoor potential is when it kicks that over from pet services to kennel. Pet services is defined as 
retail sales, incidental pet health services, and grooming and boarding of dogs, cats, birds, fish, and similar small animals customarily housed at, used as household pets when performed totally within a building and with no observable external effects. Typical uses include pet stores, small animal clinics, dog bathing and clipping salons, and pet grooming shops, but exclude uses for livestock and large animals. I go, I go for a walk, and on my walk route, there's a, a uh, animal service business that has a area outside of their business, not fenced in, where I see them walking their, their dogs outside to relieve themselves. So that's permissible. That's what I would suggest, Derek, that you do with this, quite honestly, because... He's over here. Where is he? That's, <laughs> yeah. That's what I suggest you do. Uh, yeah, um, I kind of knew that was... You need your name and address again if you're going to speak. What's that? Please enter your name and address. Oh, yeah, Derek Reinhardt, 18932 Nicholas Street. Um, the only, just I wanted to comment on the walking the dogs. We know these dogs, but we don't, they don't necessarily listen to the commands of us when it comes to like walking on the street or we've been walking outside. Um, some dogs aren't police trained. It's very, it'd be very, so for that to be allowed and not to have them fenced in in a safe environment is not, I know like there's just no middle ground here with the code with kennel and pet services. There's no, don't house the dog outside, don't even let them go to the bathroom. It's like they're either completely inside or, com or not outside at all. But if you take a dog out on a leash, there's some big dogs that come in there we don't know. They could break off the leash. Um, they could harm people walking on the street, uh, walking next to wherever we're taking them outside. Of course, we can do it in a safer area, but these aren't our dogs that we're caring for. And we do the best we can. So we have like an eight foot fence so they can't jump out. It's not even visible. You can't see through the fence. Um, there's been no noise complaints. Um, I mean, there's been no complaints. It's, it's just like there's not a middle ground here where these dogs can safely relieve themselves. Some dogs will go to the bathroom inside, some won't, and some will hold it, which will cause health issues to that dog if they hold it until they get home. It causes them to have anxiety when, they ha when they're holding it all day, waiting for, their, waiting for their owner to come and take them outside. Um, we do know there are options to do stuff inside, but that doesn't create, we, we're part of a franchise, and those other places that have done that, the, play, the HVAC systems can't handle that. It's just, you can put in the turf, you can put in the drainage, it just can't handle it, and it just reeks the whole place up. Um, that's why we didn't I do did that. In a, in, a, in a business that had inside, completely inside, everything was inside, and you walk in there and you immediately smell. So I, I get what you're saying. I'm just telling you, your options are limited, so if, 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 if you can do it, you ought to try and find a way to do it, honestly. Um, I know what you're saying, there's no yeah. middle ground, and I, and I sympathize with you, I truly do. Um, but I think you ought to try and find some options. But you guys are able to offer that option, like an option to Take this middle down. ground. What's that? Take that fence down. Okay. Unleash them. Unleash them. I know. Okay. Okay. Well, let's move on. Yeah. Um, if there aren't any other comments or questions, do we have a motion? Motion to deny. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Morris? Yes. Hey? No. Sotolongo? No. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? No. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approve. Denial. So just for clarification, Kathy, the recommendation is denied by a vote of four to three, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's the motion was to deny your re the, the yeah, request, so it's so it's been denied. How many votes did it take to deny? Four. Four. So this can proceed to city council. Derek, continue to coordinate with city staff on the next steps. Thanks. Okay. Then to item number 19, KC 10 12 179, C 10 24 169, C 11 24 170. Applicant Parkway Development Company, LLC. A request rezoning from GC to TOD 2 MX with approval of a PUR plan unit redevelopment overlay district along with the repeal of the ACI overlay. Location northeast of 30. 36th and Leavenworth Street. May we hear from the applicant, please? Good afternoon. Uh, Randy Kushark with Lamper Nearson. 
14710 West Dodge Road. Um, here on behalf of the applicant, Parkway Development. Um, Ryan Spellman with Parkway Development was unable to join me today. Um, and he has his regrets for that. But I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Um, I'll give you a quick run through for the project since I believe this is the first time anything's come before you. I believe TIFF is hopeful to be coming in a month or so. Um, but this project's located um, on the east side of 36th Street to 35th Avenue, north of Leavenworth Street. The site is locked in pretty well with some transmission lines for OPBD, which run dr directly on the north side of Leavenworth Street and in the alley back behind this site. So the design of this site, um, we're looking at an 86 unit apartment building. It'll be a four over one podium style apartment building with parking in that first level and then four levels of residential up above it. Um, great care was taken in the development of this site to not have any issues with OPBD. Our first meetings were with OPBD and their transmission folks to have that, this building comply with the OSHA requirements for setbacks to transmission lines. So as you can see here, this is the side of the building that will face Leavenworth Street. Um, there's two primary entries that occur facing Leavenworth Street on the southeast corner and one on the southwest corner. The site generally grades from high on the northwest to low on the southeast. So we mostly have fully exposed garage on the south Leavenworth face and then on the east 35th Avenue face. On the south elevation, which faces back towards the residential uses to the north, um, it doesn't show it really great here, but I'll, I'll show you an example or show you an exhibit here shortly that, that kind of shows what we're doing. The building will be a solid face of apartments that are on Leavenworth Street, and then there'll be three individual double-sided apartment unit pieces that stick back towards the residential. And so I've highlighted those spots here. Basically, this point would be apartments that project back towards or towards the north. The center piece would be towards the north and the, uh, the other piece would also go to the north with central courtyards in between each. And those would be connected on the far north side of the site. So with that in mind, I'll show you that site plan that maybe shows that a little bit. Um, so that's generally how the site would lay out with apartments along Leavenworth Street and those would project back for each one of those legs with central courtyards and amenity space up on top of the parking deck. That parking deck would relate in elevation pretty similar to the alley, but the alley drops as you go east with full garage exposure on the far east. Um, I mentioned 86 apartment units. These are planned to be market rate. Um, we, we propose to park um, in compliance with the TOD code, um, 59 parking spaces for those 86 units. Uh, the developer is aware of that type parking count and that is a consideration in their business model. Um, there is a bus stop located at the corner of this site at 36th Street. We're in communications with Metro on making sure that we have that bus stop upgraded and, and where it needs to be um, with, with their concerns there. Um, there are several items in the staff report that will be continuing to work with staff on building transparency um, and on the landscaping that we can do underneath those transmission lines with OPBD. So we'll continue to coordinate with staff on those items as well as some elevation requirements with some of the units at the northwest corner on the first residential floor of the site and how those relate to that sidewalk. Um, we're proposing to add a on-street parking stall on the east side of the site and upgrade the streetscape along Leavenworth Street or, or all three sides. Um, as you can see, the site is maximized to the most degree we can to get as many parking stalls. Um, that podium will stretch across the entire site with the building not covering all of the podium. Um, that's with trying to maximize that parking to, to get those ratios as positive as possible. But as you're aware, this Leavenworth Street corridor is a corridor that is, uh, has large employers on it with UNMC. Um, that's part of the business model. And, and, and those users, uh, the experience is that it, it does find a way uh, to go to those parking ratios. Um, so with that in mind and the, and the transit corridor and transit uh, development that is here, uh, we hope to find your approval today. And I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Randy. Any other proponents?
my name is Dave Bartholet, 16632 Francis Street. My wife Gina and I are principals in DBAR Enterprises. Um, we've been doing redevelopment in this corridor for about 18 years. We had up to about 100 doors, seven apartment complex, complexes all within a couple blocks of here, and we currently still own 23 houses pretty much in this neighborhood. I'm for this, um, I'm for this development. I like the way that it was laid out. It's gonna be really good for the neighborhood. A couple things is, this is, what sits on this right now is old family dollar, and it's a very, very tough building. It's abandoned, and it's an eyesore, and it's been an eyesore even when family dollar was in it for years ago. So that alone is really, really gonna help the neighborhood. Parking's always an issue. One of the things being down in this neighborhood every day that I see is a lot more people waiting for the bus, a lot of diversified people, construction workers, nurses, doctors, things like that, that are riding this corridor, and that's only gonna increase. In the world's best scenario, everyone would have a parking spot, but if we want density in the city, we just, we just, we have to, that's just one of the sacrifices we have. A lot of the houses in this neighborhood do have driveways, so people do have places to park, and I believe that the neighborhood can absorb the parking. Uh, it's done so over and over again, and I've been seeing it for 18 years. So uh, I think it's a good project, and I, I hope it goes. And one other thing, I am a tenant in this building, the Family Dollar, I'm the only tenant in there. I, I do have a shop in this building. Uh, I had a long-term lease on this building. The owners approached me to relinquish that lease so they could go ahead with this project, which I did. Shop space is hard to find, and I did it just for the good of the neighborhood because that's what a good developer should do. Thank yep. you, Dave. Any, any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Additional comments, questions? Eric? Yeah, I don't have much to add. Obviously, Randy touched on um, you know, coordination with the OPPD, and obviously they're aware of that, so that's good. Um, you know, and it, it, obviously, you know, I've already said a couple times, either in the pre-meeting or here in the um, regular meeting, that yeah, I mean, this stretch of Leavenworth, there is a lot going on. There's a lot of projects, um, but also a lot of need for housing, and especially everything that's happening at the Med Center and and the close proximity to, um, you know, Midtown and, and Blackstone and and you know, Mutual's current sites and, and downtown. So uh, we're excited by the project and uh, it is compliant with the TOD parking regulations. There are just a few items that Randy had mentioned that we'll continue to coordinate uh, with them on for final plans. But staff recommends a repeal of the ACI overlay, approval of the rezoning from GC to TOD to MX, and approval of the PUR overlay district subject to submit all final plans prior to city council. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the repeal of the ACI overlay, approval of the rezoning from GC to TOD to MX, and approval of the PUR overlay district subject to submittal of acceptable final plans prior to forwarding to City Council. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Okay. Yes. Sarlongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 to 0. Agenda item number 20, case C10-14-81, applicant Quantum Real Estate, LLC, request approval of a major amendment to the mixed-use district development agreement for Antler View East, location southwest of 180th and West Maple Road. And we hear from the applicant, please. Good afternoon. Uh, Scott Brown, 1925 North 120th Street with Quantum Real Estate. Uh, I'm not aware of any opposition, so just here to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Scott. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Jeff Christensen, 3205 North 184th Street, Elkhorn. Um, I am opposed to this project because I, I currently office across from a sports complex, the UBT Center on Cumberland Drive. And they are saying that they have enough parking here, but the overlap between the people that are coming and going, it, um, and it doesn't line up. And our, our office is 
is constantly used as the overflow parking and um, we try to have a business there we have a showroom and people coming and going it could work in that neighborhood on Cumberland Drive if there was enough parking but it really doesn't do a very good job this I'm very concerned with because they show some parking um, on a commercial lot here and then down here um, off that corner and with the new Costco store across the street 180th is is carrying a lot of traffic and a lot of this traffic going down to the Antler View Apartments is they use that that main street and so I'm concerned about the traffic of the people crossing the street to that sports complex and then also the buffer yards that have been relaxed um, I'm against they should be putting in all the landscaping on this property if this is going to get approved um, at per the the city requirements and so I'm against the this project for this residential neighborhood just fun to say Jeff the, yeah the UBT parking has been a pebble in our shoe for <laughs> a couple of years mm -hmm. um, but I think the planning departments learned a lot from the parking problems that route in UBT and they applied you know that knowledge towards this uh, this project so you, you, um, your your parking lot Christensen lumber is uh -huh. that you yes that's part of UBT's usage isn't it that you they they in our lease agreement, yeah. they asked us to give them parking. Well, how is that working for, for you guys? It does not work. Does not because work. when they have events that when school is out and they're having um, tournaments, let's say, we still are operating. When the school is off, we're still operating a business. And they'll come in starting at 7 in the morning or before and start utilizing the parking in our front we try to tell them well you can come around back but there isn't a great deal of parking behind yeah. the our building and so um, no it, it it doesn't work and I'm concerned for the the residential neighborhood because it's adjacent to this and so again I'm more concerned about the relaxation of the buffer yards if we're relaxing planting trees and shrubs and things um, that shouldn't be relaxed when you're putting a, a very tall building on a lot and this particular lot sits really high so you're going to see it from virtually anywhere around in the neighborhood so the UBT gotten any better since they developed that the lot that's closest to Dodge Street, that third building that got developed and added new parking that was supposed to ease a lot of those issues. And I no, I know the answer because I've been there, but I'm just no, it has not. It's not enough. And it's and it's a lot of times the the parents that and the grandparents and and everything that are coming to these events and then they leave and then the other people are trying to find a parking spot, and so it's it's the overlap where it's it's. Mm -hmm really doesn't work unfortunately when I had grandkids playing I still do have some but you know for for one grandkin kid we might have four or five cars there for, right. for one so, mm -hmm. yeah it, it's a tough situation okay. so well, th thank you Jeff thank you, you bet any other opponents seeing none I'm going to close public hearing Scott, did you want to come up and talk about parking? Mr. Christian, can I borrow that for one second? Sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, Scott Brown, Quantum Real Estate, 1925 North 120th Street. A uh, couple of, of items. First and foremost, uh, the buffer yard. Uh, the buffer yard reduction the buffer yard is only on Eric Wolf's property, which is located right here. We still have a 30 foot buffer yard between the commercial and the residential over here. And so that's the only buffer yard uh, reduction we, we've asked for. And Eric Wolf has not opposed that. Uh, and Eric has a, uh, currently has a house right here. And I've had numerous, well, I've had a couple discussions with him. Um, nothing about the buffer yard, but he's, uh, he's happy with his property. 
As far as parking, this is probably uh, the biggest learning experience I've had in commercial real estate has to do with parking. We have time since we're the last item here. Um, okay, UBT, uh, I have three kids. I've been at UBT since it's opened. I have been a part of the waiting a half an hour and missing my kids' games uh, to most recently, I live a mile away and my wife Ubers to my kids' volleyball events. And so I completely understand. I've parked in your parking lot, Mr. Christensen. Um, it is an absolute disaster. With that, we've worked with planning department extensively and we've, been, we've probably brought this to their attention. I have to look at this maybe back in October of a year and a half ago. Uh, planning department has done extensive studies on this and I know Eric has been at uh, UBT on numerous occasions personally doing parking studies himself and so we have gotten to the point where um, the planning department has come up with a, a number here which is 5.47 parking stalls per thousand square feet for the uh, facility uh, to put that in perspective I think UBT is at 3.25 without the additional parking stalls. I think they're at 3.25 or 3.5. Uh, Eric probably knows this off the top of his head ish. Um, now, if we did a Sam's Club or a Costco on this site, and again, please correct me, Eric, but it's four cars per thousand. If we do a, a major retailer, is that correct? Big box? Yeah, that's the ratio for, yeah, big box big retail. Box. So, what we are under the requirement with planning departments at a, a higher standard here of 5.47 stalls per thousand square feet, which is 38% more parking stalls than if we did a big box at this location. So parking, yes, we have a parking field that's gonna cover 1,088 stalls for 179,000 square feet. Um, it is going to be uh, a massive parking field. If we only, if we did a big box, it would be 740 stalls, I think off the top of my head. Second item is circulation of traffic. This location, uh, will accommodate a lot of traffic in a lot better manner than UBT. I've been stuck out there on 210th, I think it's 210th Street, waiting to get in or waiting to get out. Um, there's one way in, one way out. In our situation, this site here, 180th Street is down here on the bottom of the page. And this is West Maple Street. And for the sports complex, there will be access at 180th, which is a lit intersection. 183rd Street, which is a lit intersection, Big Elk Parkway, which is a lit intersection, along with Big Elk Parkway and Emma Street, which takes you all the way out to 192nd Street. This, this street right here takes you to 192nd Street, and that eventually will be a lit intersection as well. So I think I completely agree as far as being a parent, the issues we, we, we currently have at UBT, but I feel like we've done a very good job of creating the perfect site for having a sports complex and the access is there the parking is there and we have numerous requirements by the planning department that are higher than than a big box and we're willing to to do all that and and it's something that's needed in our town as a parent the lack of courts is amazing and so the legislature went went through this year and created a new sports complex or they amended the sports complex financing act to allow more sports complexes for more kids use sports and so hopefully we'll be having this problem solved by having some public financing to go with uh, these sports complexes to make them financially viable scott are you going to operate this facility are nebraska you? elite volleyball they're the largest midwest operator in the country in the, in the region um they turned down they turned down a couple hundred kids i think this year um, and so they need more courts. Uh, my, both my daughters play for them currently, and they're going to have 12 volleyball courts at this location plus six more basketball courts. They'll be converted into volleyball as well. And this will be used uh, just for more courts for tournaments. And we're trying to keep more teams in town. We travel extensively. I was in, I was in Orlando, Florida the last two weeks for, for national tournaments. And this is more courts to allow us to have more tournaments here in, in Omaha, which is needed asking that question is the, gov the ownership is uh, you brought up a, a good point which is jeff brought up a good point which is you know a lot of these traffic issues are because all of the events kind of run together mm -hmm. that there's there's no there's no real uh gap between events and everyone's trying to get in and out at the same time is there a way that you can convince the operators of the business to maybe try and schedule things so that there's not an overlap of events all the time 
they all run on the hour. So in theory, yes. And, and right now, the way they're going to do it is when there's basketball going at the same time as volleyball, basketball will be in the half an hour and the volleyball will be on the hour. But as things, some volleyball games are longer, some basketball games are shorter, it'll probably have overlap. But they have, they're also a tenant in UBT. And my understanding is they're going to continue staying there as well. But yes, they, uh, they're they trying to <laughs> correct the problems they currently have with a better facility. I know the more uses, the more money is made. Obviously, right, it's a business, right? They're in the business to make money. But it would certainly be in a benefit, I think, that whole area if they could do that. Otherwise, you're just going to get nothing but congestion out there. Completely the agree. And they also need to have parents not coming in griping because they miss their kids' volleyball game yeah, looking for parking. Yeah. It's a Sorry. I, 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 my grandson plays baseball. He plays at Zerensky Park, trying to park there on a 715 oh. game when you've got two, you know four fields and people <laughs> coming in and out. I, yeah, yeah it's, it's all the sports facilities, youth sports facilities are that way. So, Mr. Christensen, I understand your, your concerns, and, I, and, and we've done absolutely everything we can to address them. This is a facility that's going to be here for 20 to 50 years, hopefully, and we want it, we're going to do it right. I, th I think, to, to Mike's point, Instead of having maybe 10 minutes between games, if you had 20 minutes between games, that would make a huge difference. They will be the owner operator, so yes, they will make sure they can do do their best to keep the parents happy, kids on time, and people not mm. too far away from the facility. Eric, is there a, uh, um, a use permit tied to this? Like for UBT, when things got bad, we we were able to hold that over the owner and say, if you don't fix this, we will revoke your condition. I, th I think it was a conditional use permit that he had. Does, is, does that exist here? I mean, I, don't, I have a lot of concerns, but I don't necessarily want to hold this up. But if we have a way of, you know, if, it, if there's an issue a year or two down the road that we can bring, I don't know if it's Mr. Brown or the operator, whoever back and say, hey, you need to get this figured out. Yeah, so a slightly different zoning mechanism, but it does have the mixed use development agreement. Okay. I don't know the exact wording in the, you know, <laughs> for bringing them back, but yes, so if they are not in compliant with basically the operation plans that are submitted and as part of this major amendment in the site plan, if there are issues, yes, there is that ability to, to bring them back. It, it's slightly different than the conditional use permit, but um, just a slightly different zoning tool. Okay. Um, Scott is, um, I don't believe Nebraska Elite, they don't do the basketball, right? Or are they, so they'll have a, a leasee? They'll, they'll have a tenant, uh, a basketball operator. Uh, it'll go through the process of, of finding the right, the right uh, party. Not there currently, but they will be convertible courts. Uh, there are probably, I don't even know, there, there's a lot of tournaments in town as far as for volleyball. So they're going to be convertible into volleyball for tournament play. Uh, but when they're not in use, like during the week, uh, they will be basketball. Um, but there is no operator at this point. OK. And I, would, I would just stress you know, what's already been said about the operations. Yes, obviously, we have been working together on this for quite some time. And you know, I think we've made it abundantly clear just our concerns and not wanting um, to get off on the wrong foot. Like, I would acknowledge that it happened at, at UBT, I guess. we. You know, um, you know, we got behind and we were in catch up mode for a number of years. And um, I feel like we got to a better place, at, at least as far as the city looks at it and having compliant parking on on paved stalls. Obviously, we were dealing with uh, parking on grass and, you know, other situations out there that is a little bit different than what we're dealing with here. But I just want to continue to encourage if there are issues, you know, whatever your role may be moving forward, or if that's with the operator, um, you know, letting them know that if there are issues, just continue to to work with the city and finding solutions. You know, um, just want to stress that. But yes, we are comfortable based on um, the analysis and, and a lot of upfront work that we did. You know, this wasn't on a planning board agenda until you know this month, so. You haven't seen the board hasn't seen that uh, behind you know the work that that was put into it um, in leading up to this submittal so just continue to um, encourage that coordination if there are issues and, and we but we hope there aren't obviously but you know just because there are 
Um, a lot of traffic and, you know, and full parking doesn't necessarily mean there's an issue. Sometimes people just have to walk a little bit further and, um, you know, I guess I'd, I would just state that, especially as we look at the infill projects and other stuff that's been on, you know, this month on the agenda as well as others. So I don't know if you have any other uh, discussion points. I can read the recommendation report and of course you can continue uh, accordingly. Um, I don't think I need to, to get into a lot of the items in the recommendation report, uh, but there are some items that will have to be finalized before the mixed use agreement goes to uh, city council, um, both from a public works and a planning um, aspect. Staff recommends approval of the major amendment to the mixed use development agreement for Antler View East subject to Seminole 5 acceptable signed copies of the amendment prior to forwarding to city council. Do we have a motion? Uh, Dave? Just before we do that, I'd just like to comment uh, more of an observation maybe for Jeff's benefit is that because of the last, and we've alluded to everything that you're experiencing and, and all of the machinations that the, the plan department and everybody's gone through to try to find a way to resolve that. I think this project is, is, a, is a direct beneficiary of all those difficulties. And, and with the cooperation of, of the applicant, there's there've been a lot more accommodation taken in this uh, as they relate to the, the square footage per car parking place and all that stuff. But I think even beyond that, uh, what uh, Scott referred to is this site is so much more flexible and, and compatible for this type of use than that other site was. Uh, with all the different accesses to the main thoroughfares and then even the fact that you've got large parking lots, you know, relatively adjacent to it, though they're not supposed to do that, but in a case of an overflow, there at least are opportunities there without going into the neighborhoods and tying up the traffic. So I just, I don't know how much more that, that the city can do on an application like this than what has already been done to try to provide as much parking as is reasonably allowable. Yeah, do we have a motion? Thank you, Dave. Yes, I'll, I'll make, approve, or make a motion to approve the major amendments to the mixed use of the district development agreement for Antler View East, subject to submittal of five acceptable signed copies of the amendment prior to forwarding to city council. Second. We have a motion and second. Kathy, please record the vote. Salamango? Yes. Rose Tucker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved seven to zero. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Oh, just waiting to ask about that case. Well, just a second. Uh, do we have a motion? We'll close the meeting first, then okay. we'll talk to you. All right. Uh, do we have a motion on last month's pre meeting and public meeting minutes? This month's pre meeting and public meeting minutes. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Sotolongo? Rose Thacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 to 0. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. Kathy, please record the vote. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rose 